Hello and welcome to another session of Cardiac Imaging Agora. On this, uh, in this session, we will be discussing another case of uh, identifying ischemia, reporting it on a PET scan, uh, on a cardiac PET scan. So this is your, uh, again, your go-to book or uh, page uh, to uh, follow a step-by-step -step, uh, cookbook uh, a recipe to review the images, uh, identify the pathology, and then finally uh, reporting them in a clinically meaningful manner. We go back to our uh, normal format. Uh, we first review, these are all PET scans, to first review the PET images, uh, and we review the co-registration of the emission images uh, shown here, which are the perfusion images, uh, and the transmission images, which are the CT images. And we make sure that we have appropriate co-registration. Uh, we do the similar exercise for the uh, similar exercise for the stress images uh, on the uh, right hand side here. Then we move on to adjust the reconstruction planes. You can see here on the stress images, the software identified the planes uh, for cardiac reconstruction. However, on the uh, rest images, again, the software uh, uh, misconstrued the GI activity as the heart and uh, identified that as the heart. So all we have to do is move this X all the way up to the uh, center of the heart and you get the images on the left where the rest and stress images are all uh, properly aligned and uh, ready for reconstruction. Then we move to the next set of images which are reconstructed images. Again, in the standard uh, fashion, we have the stress images on the top and the rest images on the bottom. Remember with PET, all images are attenuation corrected. Uh, in the modern cameras, as we discussed in prior sessions, uh, all the attenuation correction is done via CT. So we have uh, complete uh, normal uh, 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 bagel or uh, uh, circular or uh, short axis of the heart seen from the apex to the base here. Again, this bagel donut is complete uh, on the rest images. However, we notice right away that on the stress images, there is a bite taken out of that bagel right here. There's a moderate defect uh, going from the apex uh, almost all the way to the, uh, to the base of the, of the heart uh, and the lateral and infralateral wall. We see that same defect here in the horizontal long axis images. Again, a nice reversible uh, defect uh, from uh, rest to stress indicating uh, uh, ischemia. We can see it almost in all, in all the views uh, here. Now, uh, that, don't let the uh, perfusion defect or the ischemia distract you from one other finding, which is the uh, uh, left ventricular uh, dilatation. Specifically right here, you can see it in the apex where the cavity of the left ventricle uh, dilates from, the, from rest to stress. You can see it also right here, rest to stress, LV dilatation. Then we go to score the polar maps. Again, we have uh, rest images that are uh, almost completely normal right here with a score of zero, indicating normal. When we move to the stress images, we can start scoring these defects according to the intensity of the perfusion defect or the lack of perfusion, uh, at least by visual inspection. Uh, and then we could, uh, from that, we get a some stress score 17, some rest score indicating no resting defects of zero, and some different score in, uh, reflecting the degree and amount of uh, ischemia in these uh, patients. From there on, we go to the histograms. Uh, the histograms that reflect uh, what we did uh, or what's going to happen with the gated images. Uh, this, this, are the, this is the histogram for the rest images, and this is the histogram for the stress images. Rest images, heart rate was 91. During stress images was 74. Remember, this is all uh, done with ragadenosine, so this is not active exercise. This is pharmacological uh, stress testing. And the stress images are performed at peak stress, unlike with SPECT. With PET, the patient is under the camera while they're getting the ragadenosine, and we image at peak stress. So this ejection fraction, or this uh, whatever we see here, is a reflection of uh, peak stress uh, uh, values. Then we go to review the uh, rest and stress gated images, and immediately you can notice here that the uh, software uh, could not tell whether to focus on the heart or the GI activity, so it took an intermediate position. And therefore, uh, uh, this is extremely important to inspect all these images to make sure where is the uh, software interpreting the position of the heart 
and to put these contours to figure out what's the contour that the software is interpreting as ancestolic and end diastolic volumes. Otherwise, you'll end up here seeing a resting ejection fraction of 34%, which is not true, of course, and a gated ejection fraction stress with 65%. So when we readjust the heart and limit the uh, uh, software analysis to the, we adjust the images and limit the software analysis to the, uh, to the heart, uh, you can see here appropriate uh, uh, gating and appropriate contouring of the heart, rest, the bottom, and stress on top with an ejection fraction uh, going from uh, 65 uh, uh, with stress uh, to 68 with uh, the rest images. So this is a slight drop in ejection fraction, not uh, up to the cutoff in the limit with PET, which is usually we, we, we see about 5% to call it as a drop in, in our reading. However, it's, it's important to, uh, to notice it uh, and, uh, and uh, report it. Again, you can see the dilatation here by volumes from, uh, from rest uh, to stress. Uh, reflecting the uh, uh, high-risk uh, uh, part of this test. The next part is a dyssynchrony analysis. I always, in these uh, videos, show you the normal on the left. This is a normal patient from a normal database. What happens between rest and uh, stress images, uh, complete synchronization of all the segments of the heart. In this instance, we have increased dyssynchrony from rest to stress. You can see these segments here all coming at different times. Uh, uh, reaching peak contractility at different times. This is uh, important to notice. The synchrony uh, with the stress is, is an important uh, risk uh, marker that needs to be uh, further studied with larger uh, uh, data sets and uh, multi-center uh, input. Uh, we move next to uh, uh, flow, blood flow on this, on this uh, patient. This is the myocardial blood flow ratio reflecting the ratio of rest to stress. You can see in the LAD is 1.87. Our cutoff is 1.8 for normal. In the circumflex territory, the, uh, there is no augmentation of flow in the uh, post-stress, indicating severe uh, ischemia. And in the RCA, there is uh, a mild reduction in microbial blood flow, indicating this overlap between the RCA and CERC and the analysis with an abnormal uh, global flow ratio of 1.53. Again, these are important uh, to report. We do not, we analyze them in all patients, but we do not report them in patients with ejection fraction uh, under 40%. Or if we know the patients have a prior uh, a bypass uh, surgery, uh, the data on patients with prior bypass surgery is limited. In this instance, actually this patient had a prior bypass surgery, but it's still uh, important to notice these things, at least uh, for uh, QA uh, purposes, so for, to note the uh, uh, flow ratios that are normal. You can see here, this is a patient with prior bypass surgery. You can see the wires in the chest here. In these patients, we, uh, we report the calcifications of coronary arteries, but it's not as important as patients who do not have a prior diagnosis of CAD to report the coronary calcification. Then we go next to the um, uh, report itself. Again, we show you our template, which is based on the uh, appropriate use criteria for, uh, uh, for stress testing, uh, with some caveats for patients who are, that are not included in these uh, uh, appropriate use criteria such as amyloid, anomalous coronary artery, heart transplant, sarcoid, and so on. Uh, after we pick uh, the indication for the test, in this instance, this was a patient with known CAD uh, who had a prior bypass surgery and uh, presenting with chest pain and was unable to, uh, to exercise. Uh, we reported those at what time it was given, what tracer was used, and what agent was used for uh, stress. Uh, again, these are important uh, for data capturing and consistency and QA. Then we go move on to uh, the basic demographic of the patients, the medications, um, a prior uh, uh, revascularization, if they had a prior pacemaker and so on and so forth, and what happened during the, uh, the stress test. With that, uh, we move uh, next to uh, uh, EKG findings where this patient had some ST depression during the stress test. Now notice here, I put this sign here, to show you that these images that were excellent were obtained uh, with a BMI of 39.5. Uh, the average BMI in our lab is, uh, tends to be slightly above uh, 30. So PET is not a, uh, limited by uh, high BMI, BMI given the uh, good um, account statistics you get from PET as well as the CT attenuation correction that's built in in this kind of uh, imaging. Uh, then we go on to score the left ventricular uh, size and function. Uh, which were normal in this instance with some more motion abnormality, as you can see here, especially post-stress where there is less intensity of, uh, of, uh, 
or, or thickening of the wall, uh, of the lateral wall post stress. So we call this as hypokinetic, not a kinetic, but hypokinetic. Uh, we also, sorry, we score the right ventricular uh, function. As you can see here, it's completely uh, uh, normal. Uh, after we score left ventricular size and function, right ventricular size and function, we'll move on to report the ischemic finding and uh, the overall test summary. This is an abnormal test. We have circumflex territory ischemia as depicted here and the polar maps for, uh, uh, for territories. You have CERC here, uh, you have RCA and LAD. Of course, there is some overlap between the CERC and, R and RCA in terms of calling the uh, region of, uh, of uh, ischemia. Uh, be it as it may, we uh, end up calling this as uh, uh, ischemia uh, and the circumflex coronary artery uh, territory. We moved on uh, to the final page in our report, which we have to assign a risk score for this. Given the presence of uh, TID, uh, the size of the area of ischemia, the slight drop in ejection fraction, uh, the ST depression on pharmacological stress testing, uh, we end up calling this test as, uh, as uh, high risk. Uh, this is an abnormal pharmacological stress test, high risk. Uh, these are the ejection fractions uh, uh, shown, uh, shown right, uh, right here. Now we move on to, uh, to talk about the uh, uh, cardiac uh, cath results on this patient. This patient, as I told you before, end up having a, uh, uh, being a patient who had a prior bypass surgery. Uh, this is the cardiac cath. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see a patent lemma uh, to left anterior descending uh, artery that has some uh, disease that towards the uh, apex of the uh, ventricle and the LAD. Uh, we move on uh, on the uh, right-hand side here to see the uh, circumflex coronary artery, and you can see the severe disease in the circumflex uh, coronary artery. Uh, we go to the RCA. It's a rarely uh, diseased uh, vessel. However, it has been uh, uh, bypassed uh, with a graft here, the vein graft to the RCA. And we can see finally on, the, on this image on the right, uh, the last uh, movie, uh, you can see that the patient had a vein graft to the cirque that was uh, uh, totally occluded uh, at its uh, ostium. So this patient has uh, circumflex, severe circumflex disease that's not revascularized uh, or actually revascularized, but the graft has uh, failed. Uh, the patient ended up going uh, for the PCI of uh, this uh, circumflex. And this is the result of the uh, PCI uh, at the end. Again, uh, just to take uh, the take home messages for this uh, study, uh, you can see that uh, it's important to evaluate the extent and severity ischemia on semi quantitative images, appreciate the value of left ventricular dilatation in this instance, uh, the slight drop in ejection fraction, uh, uh, especially by PET because it reflects uh, peak stress, a uh, drop in ejection fraction. Myocardial blood flow, if you have a PET system, you should be using myocardial blood flow uh, and uh, familiarize yourself with it because it gives you an idea what's going on beyond what your eye can see in the semi-quantitative images. And finally, integrate all these findings to give a clinically uh, meaningful uh, impression and uh, report. Thank you so much and uh, hopefully to see you with our uh, uh, next uh, session.